Good morning, Interweb, World Builders Log 37. We are, as always, continuing to world build our fictional planet here, placeholder named Kretak. In the last video, we dropped in our polar climate zones. In this video, as promised, we're gonna head to the tropics and drop in our tropical climates. But first, you know the drill, we got some follow-up to do. First things first is that I finished off the ice caps. Now, not ice caps in terms of the climate zone, but ice caps in terms of like the glaciers. Here is the world with the ice caps, and this is what it was like beforehand without the ice caps. With the ice caps, without the ice caps, with the ice caps. Very nice. Next up, shout out Alex Arthur 94 viewer and patron of the channel who submitted this baller bit of artwork here. It's basically a size comparison between the continents on Kretak and the continents on Earth, which I just love that you took the time to do this, Alex. So cool. And you can really see like the scale difference. This is Picard, this is Esri. They are both, they both have more area than Eurasia. And Janar is bigger than Canada and Degra is about South America. So yeah, Kretak, he's a thick boy. Shout out Alex Arthur 94 Cheers, man. Finally, just a quick clarification point from the previous video. It may have seemed remiss of me not to talk about precipitation in the previous video because like without precipitation, you know, snow, one can't make glaciers. And that's like the defining thing about ice cap climate zones, these dark gray regions here. So just to make it clear, precipitation does not really play a factor in the placement of ice cap climate zones. You can basically assume over a long enough period of time, there will be sufficient precipitation to lay down glaciers. In particularly damp areas, the glaciers will get built up really fast. In bone dry places, the glaciers may take, you know, thousands of years to build up, but they will build up. So when it comes to polar climates, we don't really care about precipitation, which is the antithesis of what we're going to do in this video. Speaking of which, let's get started. So tropical climates, AKA A climates, occur shock horror within the tropics. And they're broken down into three main subtypes dark blue tropical rainforest, slightly less dark blue tropical monsoon, bright blue tropical savanna. Now technically tropical savanna is broken up into two subtypes but no one ever cares about that. I'm not going to be talking about it here. The main shtick behind these climates is that they are hot and to varying degrees wet. Now I'm pretty sure I don't need to remind anyone what a tropical rainforest climate is but here's an example from Google Earth. Very hot, very wet, all year round, thick, dense forest, that kind of thing. Similarly, I don't think we need reminding about what tropical savannas are, but basically they look something like this. Still pretty hot, but not as wet, so the dense forests kind of give way to grasslands uh, studded with trees. And the tropical monsoon, it hasn't really got like a distinctive vibe, at least not in my mind. It's really just a transition zone between the tropical rainforests and the tropical savannas. And that's kind of all the background info we need. Let's get drawing. So for this video, I'm going to follow World Building Pastor's methodology, links in the description. It is just ace. Go check it out. So the first thing we need to do is throw on our temperature map. Specifically, we want to be showing both hemispheres winter at the same time. So like this, Northern Hemisphere winter shown at the top, Southern Hemisphere winter shown at the bottom. We're doing this because temperature wise, the defining characteristic of tropical climate zones, A climates, is the fact that they never get colder than 18 degrees Celsius. Or in other words, this sort of salmon color band here and redder is our tropical climate zone. So I'm gonna work on Esri on this one. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Very good. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna lay down my tropical rainforests or sorry, tropical rainforest climate zone. It's going to occur in regions that never get colder than 18 degrees Celsius and that are very wet year round because that's basically what the rainforest is. It's really hot, it's really wet. So to find these areas, we're going to need to turn on both of our precipitation maps at the same time, which can just get a bit hard to see what's going on. So what I've done is I've taken one of the precipitation maps and changed its blending mode to difference. Now, admittedly, that is still a chaotic mess, but there is meta to my madness here, right? We're dealing with two colors in our precipitation maps, right? We're dealing with a cyan color and a blue color. Therefore, when we overlay things, there are four possible combinations of color overlays, right? Bit hard to see sometimes where the overlap here. So if we take one of them and again, put them onto difference mode, what we find is, or what the sort of mathematical definition of the difference blending mode is, is that if you have two colors, that are the same, 
the difference between those two colors is zero, which the computer renders as black here. Same thing with the cyan, two of the same color laid on top of one another, no difference, black. But if we have different colors, there will be a difference. And in this particular case, the difference between cyan and blue is green. So going back here, I know that any black regions will have the same precipitation summer and winter. Any green regions will have different precipitation patterns and any unmodified colors like just this cyan and blue mean that that, that precipitation only occurs in one season, dry, some precipitation. So that, that kind of makes it, I, I think, a little bit easier to read. It takes a little getting used to, but it's not too bad. So now we just need to check out these black regions. We're looking for very wet year round. So we have cyan here, which becomes black. So this is cyan year round. No good. That's just wet. This chap in here, though, dark blue turns into black. Therefore, it must be dark blue year round. That is very wet. So I can turn on my rainforest layer come in here and paint over that zone like so now i'm using warm colors here and not the canonical blue colors just so there's contrast between the precipitation map and the climate zone we'll change it at the end okay i'm gonna hop into time lapse now i'm just gonna look for all the areas in between my two 18 degree isotherms that are very wet dark blue in both seasons and color them in Okay, done. Those red regions are my rainforests, or again, rainforest climate zone. Next, we want to drop in our monsoon climate zone, our AM climate zone. And to do this, it is basically, it's the remaining black areas. We're looking for areas that are wet year round. So cyan year round, which I'm not mistaken is this area and this area. done again i'm not looking at these regions down here because they fall outside of the 18 degree isotherm range and finally we're going to lay down our savannas or again sorry tropical savanna climate zone and these are going to go in regions that are wet in one season and dry in the other season so basically anything that remains cyan Now up here, for example, is a place where I might need to turn off my blending mode for a second and just toggle this on and off. Yeah, I thought so. There's a cyan region here that goes to nothing in the next season, in the other season. So that should also be savanna. Okay, tropical climates, done. S sorta. This is like the baseline version of these climates. But as I'm sure you've noticed, there's a whole bunch of different precipitation patterns happening here that will add to these kind of baseline zones. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find areas that are very wet in one season and wet in the other season, which again, using our difference blending mode are these green areas. The difference between blue and cyan is green. The difference between wet and very wet is green. We're going to make these regions either tropical rainforest or tropical monsoon, depending. Basically, the closer we are to the equator, the more likely these green regions are to be tropical rainforest. The further away they are from the equator and the closer they are to like dry regions or these 18 degree isotherms, the more likely they are to be tropical monsoon. There is no kind of like hard and fast rule here. It's very much a go on vibes, look at earth, etc. So for me, I think this green region here, it's bang on the equator. I think that's definitely a tropical rainforest. Now, these green regions here, they are a little more interesting. On Earth, we find rainforests between the equator and about 10 to 15 degrees latitude, north and south. So that places this peninsula here firmly within a kind of like tropical rainforest zone. But the thing that's given me pause is that we're getting really close to the boundary, to the 18 degree isotherm boundary down here. So I'm wondering, just to kind of hedge my bets, maybe we can make these coastal regions here, we can make them monsoon, tropical monsoon. Perhaps that's a good idea. Or alternatively, it's a peninsula. This is an island surrounded on three sides by water, tons of moisture in there. I think it can go either way. I'm gonna make the peninsula entirely rainforest and I'm gonna leave a bit of monsoon on this island, I think. Let me know what you think. Okay, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. 
cool. So now we deal with this buckle boy here. Regions that are very wet in one season and are dry in the other season. Very wet, dry. We're going to make this region either tropical savanna or tropical monsoon. It's tropical savanna if it's inland or near any arid areas. Otherwise, it's tropical monsoon. So expect it to show up like near coasts, mountains, rainforests, that sort of thing. So game plan here is... I reckon the northern half of this boil here will be savanna. And remember, monsoons are transition zones, so it'll transition through a monsoon climate to get to our rainforest climate. So let's do that first. And just like before, I'm going to switch the blending mode once again at the very end, just to make sure I got everything, because there's a few bits and bobs down here that we missed. All right, um, now we're nearly done. All we want to do now is finesse things a little bit. Like if there's anything that looked kind of weird, just manually kind of correct it. I'm looking at you, like Italy, <laughs> monsoon Italy here. I think it's, even though precipitation told me to do this, I think it's a bit weird. It's just this, this random like jutting of the monsoon zone into the rainforest zone. I think I'm just going to paint over that. Yeah, makes sense to me. Dude, that feels a whole lot better. And the other thing is you want to make sure you have a smooth rainforest to monsoon to savanna transition. You can see that in maps of earth. You go very smoothly from the blue to the medium blue to the light blue. Sometimes this gradient can be quite abrupt. Sometimes it can be quite expansive, but there always will be that kind of gradient there. So we want to identify any areas where we're going from, say, in this case, red to yellow without an intermediate orange zone and we'll plop an orange zone in here the only place i can immediately see is this peninsula here so let's adjust that everything else looks fine like obviously along the mountain here as you gain altitude it's going to transition from rainforest to monsoon to savanna but that that transition is going to happen so quickly because this is like basically this is like the andes like a sheer wall i'm just not going to bother really marking it in because you, you won't really see it. It'd be less than a pixel, basically. So I'm fine there. So I think everything, I think that's all good. Uh, final, final thing is just whack on the topographic map and make any adjustments based on the topography. All this really does is basically it neatens up the zone a little bit. You'll see what it is in time lapse if there's any additions to be made at all. Okay, so look, at I may have got a little bit carried away there. I know I said I wasn't going to do any of the transition zone stuff along the eastern edge of this mountain chain, but then I just, I got into it and I couldn't stop myself and here we are. The effect is absolutely minimal. I don't know why I did it. So for now, that is basically that. That is how you do tropical climate zones a la world building pasta. Shout out. Uh, off air, I went ahead and I did the rest of the regions on the planet. All right, that is them looking pretty sweet. Now, they're not perfect, right? Like there's a couple of areas where I'm like, mm, given a bit of side eye, uh, but I'm going to leave it for now and we'll come back to it after we've put in some of our dry climates. I'd like to get a better understanding of what's around these uh, climate zones before I muck with them anymore. Uh, the two regions that immediately kind of spring to mind for me are this region here. This is a mountain chain. There's a rain shadow effect going on here. But we are also, if I bring up my temperature maps, we are also smack bang on the equator. So there's always just a background level of wetness going on, you know? So I would not be surprised if this savanna zone actually needed to like stretch across to like can make a contiguous kind of savanna band like what we see on earth again don't want to plonk at it now but that's a thing that might occur and then the other region is over here in Janna, where we kind of have there's a mountain running up the middle of this island but we kind of have two like just dry parts here for reasons i don't really know the precipitation map made sense at the time but now i'm seeing it in climate zones i'm like mm, maybe not they will likely need to get colored in again let's leave it until after we've put in the climate zones around it oh and and this random bit of rainforest up near near the tropics here I, I'm not, hope, not sure how pleased I am with that. I think that might need to be erased, etc., etc. As with everything I do, it is always a work in progress. Anyhow, for now, tropical climate zones 
done. Next time, everyone needs to make sure they bring adequate hydration because we're off to the desert. I hope you'll join me for that one. So thanks for watching and until next time, it grouse.